Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we go racing here in the Truck Series, Xfinity Series, as well as the Cup Series. Once again, no silly season news coming your way, but definitely stay tuned for some potentially in the next episode or two here as we would get going for the Truck Series. So a big episode today. We have two Xfinity Series races. Uh, I believe it's Iowa and Road America, but first up we have the Eldora Dirt Derby here on the Truck Series side where we had subscriber Mitchell Mardiros in the truck for us here as we were getting ready to go green so like i said big episode here on the way with all the races and then of course we have michigan in the cup series last season in that race we actually dnf when eric jones was able to pull off the victory but we were underway here in the eldora dirt derby on the inside line it was a pretty solid qualifying effort for mitchell mardiros he was up here in p7 for the start of this event and after just half a lap he was up towards the top five as he went down into turn three uh, austin wayne self angela rutch was in the mix but we would actually come through out of turn three are already up to the lead here in Eldora. So Mitchell goes from P7 to P1 in just one lap here at Eldora. But unfortunately, it wasn't just kind of cool, calm, and just breezing to victory. It actually uh, came down to a battle here between him as well as Mike Harmon here as he came through approaching the final couple laps of the race. Mike Harmon going for the victory. He won at Daytona in the Xfinity Series. I think it was last season. And here he was going for a truck series win at Eldora. Now on the final lap, Mitchell giving it everything he has here to try and beat Harmon, but Harmon opens up a gap into turn three. Mitchell Mardiros decides to send it into the corner nails the 74 of Harmon in the side as they come through out of turns four sliding up the track the 45 of Majeski gets to the inside it's a photo finish not with Harmon but Majeski but we come through with the victory here in the Eldora Dirt Derby so starting off the episode uh, with quite the intense finish now here at Eldora as you see the rest of the finishing order on your screen so to round out the field was Jordan Anderson as well as Natalie Decker but we come through into the Xfinity Series now as I believe that was like our 34th win in the Truck Series by the way but here we are with Paul Menard behind the wheel at Iowa for the U.S. Cellular 250 uh, for Iowa. So we usually don't ever really run good at this racetrack. There's you see Mike Carmen actually crashed during qualifying. I will be changing a few names out here in the Xfinity Series to match some of these new modded schemes that uh, FRG Designs has made for us. And you will see a brand new modded scheme probably in the next episode actually for Timmy Hill in the Xfinity Series. So very excited to show you guys that one is uh, FRG has been doing a tremendous job of making us uh, some really cool paint schemes so far here on the Xfinity sides recently. So very excited to show some more off here as the rest of the season goes on and potentially in the future of the career mode as well if he continues uh, to make some schemes for us here. Now, as we came through though, completing that first lap, Paul was actually trying to make this outside line work here as he went down into turns one and two uh, as we usually can make that outside work at Iowa pretty well. And Paul was doing a decent job, but like I said earlier, we struggle a lot here in pretty much any series with Iowa. So definitely considering that uh, with the ability to potentially mod the schedule in career mode next season this would be a track that's on the cup schedule if that is the case uh, so definitely not sure if i would be looking forward to this one but we came through now to the end of this race here in Iowa and Paul really hadn't gotten anywhere it was just one of those races uh, that just didn't go very well for us didn't have a whole lot of speed so we came through to cross the line there in P15 so definitely a, a disappointing race overall as Justin Allgaier with the victory Sam Mayer in P2 I believe that was Allgaier's second win on the season if I remember correctly uh, but overall just one of those days that didn't go well for Paul here behind the wheel but of course we are locked into the playoffs so really nothing to worry about uh, as we have multiple wins with this Xfinity team as Chad Fincham at the bottom there P36 he actually won the Daytona 500 if you guys remember back in uh, probably our rookie season I think it was in the career mode for the Cup Series, so it's been quite some time since that happened here. Uh, as we jump into the very next Xfinity Series race here at Road America, unfortunately this time uh, we actually got sent to the back here with Paul Menard, so he was not in a good position at all going into this race. So we definitely uh, had our work cut out for us here now, as he was definitely not going to waste any time being aggressive here, as he was looking to potentially go up that left-hand side into turns one, but really nowhere to go. Uh, so he really has to slow up into the corner. The AI check up so hard here. Uh, Road America by the way if we do mod the schedule in the cup series next season in the career mode this is another track that you will see on the schedule so uh basically bringing in 
all of the road courses except potentially the Indianapolis road course because I'm not sure uh, if the AI uh, are, are actually fast enough there. So I'll have to do some testing here as we came through a little bit later. Paul lunging up the left-hand side there into that uh, 90 degree left-hander and made up a bunch of ground. And as it came through later in the race, now passing Timmy Hill there in the one car. And he was moving his way forwards but just ran out of time at this point. Haley Deegan, by the way, was leading the way. This was now on the final lap as he lunges up the inside of the 36 of Alex LeBay, the Canadian right there. He also passed uh, Justin Allgaier here as they come through. The carousel now goes up the right-hand side here as they come through. So he's going to move up another position. But once again, like I said, just kind of ran out of time. We came through down the front straight away. Haley Deegan would actually come through to get her fourth win on the season. Paul Menard, on the other hand, there crosses the line just behind that 99 car of Josh Balicki, and it finishes P8. So, uh, inside the top 10, can't complain. Kevin Magnuson, the former F1 driver there in P2, a good run to potentially get him into the playoffs here in his second season of his Xfinity Series career. Uh, he missed the playoffs in his first season, and currently is on the outside looking in here in his second season as well. So, it's going to be tough for him to make it, but we'll have to wait and see what happens now as we do, sure enough, jump through into the Cup Series side of things here at Michigan. Michigan. I consider this track, I, I've mentioned this a few times, kind of Michigan, Watkins Glen for myself being Canadian and where I am in Canada, I consider Michigan and Watkins Glen to kind of be my quote-unquote home tracks here in the Cup Series as Michigan and Watkins Glen are both about four, four and a half hours away from me here. Uh, now as we go down into turns one though for our qualifying effort with a goal of 39.3 seconds and definitely uh, can get close to that I felt like here and sure enough down the front straight away it was definitely looking close but we're going to cross the line and actually beat the goal with the 39 9.088, but it's only go P18 here in the Consumers Energy 400, so not the qualifying effort I expected based off of the lap time that we just laid down, but there you see the rest of the order. Ryan Blaney, Chase Briscoe, Bubba Wallace, Alex Bowman, Ryan Priest, your top five, then you got Ross Chastain rounding out the top ten, uh, Elliot down there in the 20s, and then Keselowski down there in the 30s, and Brandon Jones rounds out the field in P40. All right, boys, we've had a lot of speed recently. I definitely know we could pull it off here at uh, Michigan. I don't know if we'll have a winning car today. Uh, it always seems like we lack a little bit of that speed that we need here. So we'll see what we can do, but let's go have a good one. There you hear myself on the radio as we're ready to go green for the Consumers Energy 400 here at Michigan International Speedway. You've seen the stories of the race. Brandon Jones definitely going to look a little bit slow today. Anthony Alfredo, though, could be looking a little bit fast today here. Posted some fast laps in practice. Chastain failed optical scanning station multiple times. You will be starting at the back of the field here as we are ready to take the green flag. So we move up one spot due to Chastain being sent to the back. Now behind the 47 of Ricky Stenos Jr. Now as the green flag is out. And we are underway here in Michigan in that 17th starting position. Right beside us, we got Daniel Suarez on the row behind. You see the 33 of Austin Cindric, who's still on the outside looking in. Definitely hasn't been the debut Penske season that he was looking for. Definitely ran better in that 21 car for Wood Brothers Racing last season. So he's pretty much in a must-win situation to get in. Another thing I've mentioned recently that you really got to keep an eye on is a driver like Brandon Jones, who's currently, I think, 31st in points. And he's not even 20 points out or something like that of getting into the top 30. And he has a win back at Phoenix. So if he can get back into the top 30 in the point standings, he will get, uh, put himself back in the playoffs. But as well, another driver we have to watch is Ryan Priest, who's falling down the points stand, uh, standings order. And he could end up falling out of the top. 30 and then actually put Austin Cindric in and Priest would be out after winning at Martinsville earlier this season so it's going to be interesting to watch how things go in these final four regular season races. But now we focus to what's happening on the track. Alex Bowman out front right now over second place. Bubba Wallace, Ryan Blaney down to P3 battling for that spot with Chase Briscoe. Now is there going to go four wide in front of us? we got the McLaren of Eric Jones on the far outside. The two JGR teammates of Hamlin as well as Kyle Busch. Then the Red Bull of Casey Kane as we go down into turn three. Casey Kane, we've been hearing some rumors now that that Red Bull team might actually create an alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing potentially next season to get some better uh, cars there for that team and potentially increase that performance there's we actually are, are going to pass the 21 of Ryan Priest side by side with Matt DiBenedetto now myself and DiBenedetto decide to split the 82 of Kane three wide here as I go on the inside DiBenedetto to the top as we go down into turns one and already moving up into P11 at the end of the second lap DiBenedetto though falls back Kane remains on my outside there for a moment here as we go down this back straightaway. Definitely hasn't been the season Casey Kane was hoping for here in his NASCAR comeback. Uh, now, as I would expect to not see him in that car next 
chases. And as I would now pass my teammate of Kyle Larson, move up into P11, uh, as Chase Elliott was coming through here, I definitely saw some cars coming up behind me that had more speed. And one of those was Chase Elliott here on lap five. He runs me down. I decided to not hold him up whatsoever. But the other one was the McLaren right behind me in my rear view mirror of Eric Jones. So as we come through now out of turns four on lap six, Jones, uh, he decided to go up to the top. I left the door wide open because I realized how fast he is as we're all running down, though, that 12 of Ryan Blaney. He was a little bit off the pace. Started up there at the front, but definitely doesn't have race winning pace in that car as we go three wide down into turns one with uh, Blaney as well as Eric Jones here as we come to the center of the corner. So we're trying to move ourselves towards that top 10 position, uh, but every time we gain a position, it seems like another couple cars comes by uh, and passes myself here like Eric Jones. So we're down in P12 uh, as we go down towards turn three about the halfway point in stage one. Noah Gregson though had taken the lead. His, him as well as Alex Bowman were scrapping it out for that lead position as you see on that track map. Bowman went to the lead for a second then it went back to Noah Gregson as I'm right on the back of the nine of Chase Elliott now as the 14 of Briscoe's kind of fading a little bit along with the Stuart Haas racing teammate of Cone Custer in that 41 car so I knew we would probably get to the top 10 here just momentarily if we kind of stay patient now uh, as we go into the corner. Now as Elliott decides to go up a lane there I tried to get up the inside but I couldn't make it happen right here as I just didn't have the speed to get to the inside of the nine so the McLaren of Jones now gone. Elliott decides to stay behind the slow 14 car so now I move up the inside and we sure enough put ourselves into P10 now up the inside of the 14 at Briscoe into turns 3 and we will take over P9 clearing the 14 with no problems at all a very easy pass to complete now as we come through on the exit of turns 4 so it was just a matter of time until Chase Elliott would be able to get by that 14 but by the time we came to a lap 11 Bubble Wallace now was falling actually down the order so we pass him for P8 he drumps down to P9 trying to hold on to a top 10 he is and get any stage points that he can get but we come through to the final lap of stage one. Elliot continued to follow us through into P9 as I'm still running P8. He was definitely getting closer and closer trying to put some pressure on here on this final lap of stage one. Only one lap of feel in the car. The tire, the right rear tire specifically, was down to 19%. So it wasn't looking great, but obviously there's not enough time for anything to really go wrong with the tires or feel, or feel here. So we were just trying to hang on as we go down into turn three. Elliot actually gets to my inside there. I didn't really want to fight him too much here as we come through turn three and turns four. So he's going to go up the inside as we exit the corner is going to be side by side down the front straight away there as it's going to be actually a photo finish it looks like for that eighth spot but we barely hold on there over the nine of Chase Elliott so he has to settle for P9 Bubba Wallace rounds out the top 10 as Eric Jones gets seventh Harrison Burton sixth Logano rounds out the top five as well as got drivers like Kyle Busch Denny Hamlin Noah Gregson second Alex Bowman with the stage victory picking up another playoff point but Bowman has been so fast lately here in the career mode it's very cool to see that happen now is that he's picking up a lot of playoff points getting ready for his playoff run two wins currently on the season looks like he could be in position to potentially get that third win of the season here today car feels decent guys but we just are kind of lacking that speed that i was mentioning about at the uh, beginning of the race so we'll see what we can do there you hear myself on the radio. I did make a few small adjustments as I gained one spot, overtaking the 0-2 McLaren of Eric Jones. Now with stage 2 is underway from the 7th position, and for the start of stage 2, we'll go through into the amp segment. Down a few positions there after the amp segment concludes into P9. We go after restarting in P7. Alex Bowman continues to lead the way. Three wide potentially. Four wide up there between Hamlin, Logano, Gregson, as well as Kyle Busch there for a brief moment here. Uh, as you look in the top left, only 12 laps here. And we already have just 10 laps to go in stage two. Quite a bit shorter here as we go down towards turns one up the inside of that nine of Elliott. Just trying to gain back that time we lost there on that restart. 
but definitely couldn't quite make it work like I wanted to here on this bottom lane. You see that 19 of Harrison Burton actually get that run on the exit of the corner, and he nearly clears us here as we go down this back straightaway as I decided to pull a bit of a side draft on him to hold him back and try to re-clear him uh, in turns three. But then Alex Bowman, he goes all the way to the top, gives up the lead to Denny Hamlin momentarily now, as I still couldn't quite get clear again of that 19 of Harrison Burton. So that was a little bit frustrating right there that I couldn't quite complete that pass, and this battle would continue to the end of lap four now as we were still side by side with the 19 of Harrison Burton and sure enough this time here I side draft him again with eight to go on the stage not wanting him to get clear as uh, Denny Hamlin by the way now is driving away from the field unlike Alex Bowman who was battling for the lead earlier with Noah Gregson he couldn't really drive away this time Hamlin's driving away as Burton clears myself there I got a little bit looser after getting on the apron but with seven laps to go on lap six back up the inside of the 19 of Harrison Burton here as we go down into turns at one Eric Jones and the McLaren was now making a pass on Alex Bowman for second place on the end of lap six is actually we clear the 19 of Burton there through turns three and four so we move up into P8 get to the back of Noah Gregson as well as Kyle Busch here deciding you know what we're just going to take it three wide here We've, we have that opportunity to make that happen with six laps to go in stage two as I do see our rival of Joey Logano running up here in P5 now as I make a bit of a mistake there on the entrance of the corner go way down on the apron that really upset the car here so we give up a bunch of time on the exit of the corner but Logano gets passed by both Gregson and Kyle Busch. So here I am looking up the inside of Logano now with just four laps to go on the stage, knowing how hard it is, of course, to pass Joey Logano, him being a rival. Right here gets very close between myself and the 22. I pulled out and then actually kind of just went straight into the corner. That opened the door back open for the 19 of Harrison Burton to get back past myself here as we exit turns too. So we end up dropping back to P9 here as Denny Hamlin continues to lead the way. Burton would actually continue on his move forwards, passing both Joey Logano as well as Kyle Busch as now we were approaching the final lap of stage two. Hamlin even further out in front of second place as I back out of it right there, making sure the 22 doesn't drive me into the wall here. As it's been so hard over the last few seasons, a uh, few seasons of getting Joey away from being a rival. And it is possible. We have done it in NASCAR Heat 4. So we know we can do it in NASCAR Heat 5. It's just up to me to stay away from that 22 at all costs. If I have to give up a win at this point uh, to make sure we don't run into Joey Logano or something or he doesn't run into me, I might have to do it because we really need to make sure that we can just get him away from being a rival and get him back towards that friendly status here as we come through out of turns four on this final lap of stage two. Denny Hamlin wins stage two. We come through to cross the line here for a strong top 10 uh, in P9, but just lacking that overall pace in the car. Definitely don't have speed uh, capable of winning this one as Kevin Harvick ends up rounding out the top 10 here in his final race at Michigan now. As you see, Eric Jones is the McLaren second place, Alex Bowman third, Elliott fourth, Noah Gregson rounds out the top five as I'm going to make some more adjustments on the car just a little bit there on that right rear tire pressure putting it up uh, now as I was trying to keep it even with that right front tire and hopefully that will help us a little bit here in this third and final stage. Did you see Ryan Blaney and Sheldon Green by the way both DNF Blaney shouldn't have to worry as long as that uh, Brandon Jones stays out of that top 30 in points he should be safe now as, and if Ryan Priest ends up falling out of the top 30 in points it helps him even more and puts Cindric in as well to make the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting like I said over these final few races in the regular regular season as we are underway for this third and final stage and it's only 18 laps so there's not a whole lot of time here in stage three to get the job done so we got to be aggressive right off the bat now as we're going to be potentially three wide as we exit turns two with Harvick and Logano but I just didn't have a lot of speed there on the exit of the corner but really just trying to immediately come up with an idea to get ourselves past that 22 of Logano didn't quite know what I wanted to do now as it's hard to pass on the outside here but we're gonna have to have a huge run to be able to pass him on the inside or hope that he goes all the way to the wall or something like a few drivers have done already and then we just kind of cruise by on that bottom now as we come through down the front straightaway completing this first and opening lap now as Denny Hamlin continues to lead Alex Bowman there in P2 behind him Eric Jones in the McLaren in P3 Eric Jones in a must win situation to get into the playoffs at this point at the same track he won at last season now with McLaren and that's still their first and only win in the Cup Series so far now uh, as we go down towards turn 3 Gregson is actually taking third place back from Jones but Gregson goes up to the wall Jones goes to the bottom Jones will move back up into P3 again as now I decided to change it up a little bit there in turn three did not work
work at all with the line change and that allows Tyler Reddick to slip up the inside here as we come through to cross the line. So now only 16 laps remaining here and we're under attack from the eight car of Tyler Reddick. So just hoping I can find an opportunity to get back down to that bottom, but I still wasn't going to make it easy there on the eighth, trying to make this outside line work here or the second lane at least now has come through out of turn two. Couldn't quite pull it off. We dropped back down now to P10. There were three wide behind us for a brief moment, but as we went down into turn three on now uh, still lap 35, the eight car decides he's going to go to the top. So I went to the bottom and we actually repass him and move back into P9. Alex Bowman had now taken the lead away from Denny Hamlin. Bowman trying to pick up that third win on the season, but then Eric Jones in the McLaren would take the lead away from Alex Bowman here as I had now lost contact with the front eight drivers there with Logano at the very back as well as Kyle Busch uh, at the very back of that pack right there. But now Tyler Reddick, he was trying to look to my outside and, and I decided at this point, the only chance we have of running those guys down is allowing one of these cars right behind me, either Harvick, Custer, or Reddick to get in front of me. And then I just try to bump draft them. So I was actually allowing this eight car to get to my outside and trying to get him clear of me as we went down into turn three. So by the time we go down the straightaways, we can actually just kind of connect bumpers, bump draft and try our best to gain any time we can here as he does sure enough clear myself on the exit of turn four as I kind of pull a block there on the four of Harvick but now we would try this bump drafting tactic with Tyler Reddick and already pulling a gap to Custer and Harvick behind us there as we run P10 but then Reddick decides he's going to still run the outside line so it would completely defeat the purpose of what we were trying to do uh, so we really couldn't pull off this bump drafting tactic anymore so now it was either short pit try something or just hope for a caution here as we go down into turn three we don't have the speed to win this race but maybe if we short pit we could potentially get a top five out of it. So uh, we actually end up clearing Reddick once again as he went up to the top here. Uh, so back into P9, only five laps of fuel in the car. So I decide, you know what, we're going to try short pitting. On at lap 43 down the back, straight away towards turn three, Eric Jones in the McLaren still out front honestly looking like he could potentially win this race here for this first win of the season putting him in the playoffs but I decide right here at the end of lap 43 we're coming into the pit lane a little bit earlier than everybody going through the grass just a little bit here now as we will get down to pit road speed no problem at all there as you see the couple cars DNF between Blaney as well as the 37 of Sheldon Creed here no tires and half a can of fuel is all I was doing but the caution actually comes out so immediately I decide four fresh tires two cans of fuel would end up being the call to go with this was the perfect scenario right here. You could not have anything better happen whatsoever. Now everybody's pitting and they are not going to have four fresh tires and we will and we will be leading because we don't have to pit here during this little uh, cut scene. So all of a sudden we're going to be on the front row P1 with four fresh tires while well, everybody else does not have four fresh tires. So we just pulled off the strategy call of a lifetime by complete accident here and there was no reason at this point we should lose this race with a tire advantage. So now all of a sudden we are back green with just four laps to go here in Michigan and Eric Jones who was looking to be in perfect position to win in the McLaren or Alex Bowman our teammate or even potentially Noah Gregson well now here we are leading the way into turns one and two uh, and I mean we probably just got the luckiest break of our cup series career right there with that just happening you could have not asked for a better scenario to short pit um, and then everybody's staying out. Caution comes out while you're on the pit lane. You get to put four fresh tires on the car while everybody else does not put four fresh tires on the car and you get to be P1 on the restart. Uh, you could have not had anything better and you can see the tire advantage right off the bat coming into effect. We already opened up a gap. Now down the straightaways, these guys are definitely going to run us down because like I said earlier, we just don't have that uh, pace down the straightaway to be with these guys. They are definitely just downright faster than myself as we go down into turns one under attack there from the 0-2 of Eric Jones, but we would open that gap up a little but here's a can't do two laps to go in this race with this four fresh tire advantage over everybody. Now as we go down into turns one, Bowman to P2, Jones falling down the order using that outside lane here in the final couple laps. Did not expect to be in a position to potentially win this race even just, you know, six, seven laps ago. But here we are now out of turns four, opening up the gap even more as Bowman was trying to use this outside. So we come through to start the final lap here in Michigan and Bowman doing everything he can. He was making that outside work trying to build up a huge run down these straightaways and sure enough into turns one and two for the final time Alex Bowman to the top again we have four wins on the season at least one of them was just straight up luck at Las Vegas earlier this season and it looks like we're about to luck 
into our fifth win on the season now as Bowman has a big run one final time down this back straightaway. I did have a poor exit out of turns two. He's there. He's close, but it's not going to be enough as he goes all the way to the top in turns three and four. If he went to the bottom, he might have had a chance, but we come through out of turns four and the strategy call of a lifetime by complete accident is going to put us in victory lane here at Michigan International Speedway. I honestly did not think we were ever going to get a win at this racetrack whatsoever in the career mode, but at the same time, I also thought we were never going to get a win at Las Vegas, and we did that earlier this season, uh, what was what just the second race of the season. Uh, a little bit different, of course, uh, in Las Vegas. It kind of happened on strategy, just with the AI being uh, stuck in the back, at least the fast cars, and we were up at the front, and we were able to drive away uh, while they were working their way through the field. This time out, I mean, we just got the luckiest uh, strategy uh, on the planet right there, and I'm very thankful for that there as we put it in victory lane here in the Consumers Energy 400 here in Michigan. So, very, very happy with that one. Win number five on the season. Uh, honestly, we should probably only have three wins on the season in right now uh, but obviously a little bit different we have no uh, five now so very very satisfied with that Daniel Suarez unfortunately brought out that last caution he went seven laps down with a DNF uh, as we're gonna see the point standings here in just a moment uh, to see what in the world is going on with that playoff battle Chase Elliott P7 in the points having a solid season uh, just cannot find victory lane here so very unfortunate for him uh, as you see Haley Jiggin leads the way now in the Xfinity series there with four wins so she's having an incredible season here all of a sudden ever since she announced he was going to Stuart Haas Racing as you see though uh, at the very bottom in the truck series it's Joe Nemechek uh, in the playoffs the playoffs are actually going to be underway here in the next truck series race and once again there you see the Xfinity one with Sam Mayer towards the bottom as well as Quinn Half. both of those drivers winless as we go to Watkins Glen in the next episode of track that I love racing at at the road course and we could potentially somehow pick win number six up there as we are back out in front though in terms of the win column among all the drivers this season as you see some of our stats right now for this season overall that was actually our 100th career top 10 in what now our 136 cup series career race so a uh, very very good career we've had so far there as we've got uh, apparently 17 wins so far in our cup series career and win number five on the season austin cendrick 38 points below the cut line cole custer 49 gregson 91 chastain 113 eric jones 119 as bubba wallace and ryan blaney their last cars in brandon jones still out by 22 points of the top 30 that's the one you really got to watch but ryan priest is good by less than 15 points i think it said he's 11 points above 30th so that's also going to get close but of course i just want to say a quick thank you to the going racing members of mj aiden joseph 9001 rj timothy bubba jr illinois diecast brett Dorward, uh dark gengar gaming aj Vasura, as well as movement for supporting me with the membership program i really do appreciate it as always if you guys enjoyed you know what to do uh and thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode and i'll see you guys in the next one for some road course racing at Watkins Glen. Have a great day, everybody.